Welcome to another episode of One Idea Away, where we're committed to living more fully, deeply, and consciously. Why? Because when we do, we're calmer, we're clearer, we're more connected, more joyful, and much more alive. On this show, we bring you stories of those that are figuring it out just like us, as well as experts who can shed light on the hows and the whys all of this stuff works. So I want to thank you all for tuning in and sharing and reviewing our show. If you haven't done so yet, please drop us a review. Also, subscribe to the podcast on our feed, whether it's on iTunes or whatever app you happen to be using. And if there's something that stands out in the show... Do us a favor. If it makes you think of somebody, share it along because this show is meant to get the conversation started, not just to drop in for a little inspiration. So with that, let's turn to this week's episode. Today's episode is sponsored by, well, us, One Idea Away, and very specifically by the 10 Days to Connection Challenge. You see, we ran this really interesting experience for our community in a slightly smaller way to, to bring people into greater connection with themselves, to clear away the mental clutter, to detox their hearts so they could be more open and free with the experience of life that they were having. And it went amazing. We received such incredible feedback about how wonderful this process was and how freeing it was for people to really really connect to life in a deeper way and move past all the stress and the chatter and all the things that distract us on a day-to-day type of basis that ultimately disconnect us from who we truly are and the life that we love. And so this 10 days connection challenge is meant to help you clear that, that clutter, that mental chatter that keeps you from connecting to that happier life. It helps you to create the space that you deserve to simply take a breath to uncover what makes you happy and to let go of anything that isn't working. You get to detox your mind, detox your heart, and connect to that life that you wish to experience and learn how to bring out more in you and in everything that you experience on a day in and day out basis. It's just five to 10 minutes a day for a week and a half and it's one of the most beneficial things you can do for yourself to create that space that you need to connect to the life that's waiting for you. Just go over to oneidealway.com forward slash connect. That's oneidealway.com forward slash connect. And I look forward to joining you there. Hey there, everyone. You know, it, it's interesting because right now, most of my conversations uh, offline, but probably online too at this point, they bring up this really interesting struggle that I see so many people wrestling with. It's this struggle of feeling disconnected from who they really are. It's this struggle of feeling like they've lived life according to the rules, the expectations, the judgments, even the promises, as well as the demands of other people. It's this struggle of feeling like at some point in their life, they started to withhold a part of themselves, perhaps a large part, because they were either afraid to share it or experience taught them that they'd be harmed in some way if they do. Well, one way or another, that disconnection from self is because of a life of limitation, Those limitations have become so ingrained, we believe them to be real, that this is just the way that it is. And then there are those that speak to what life can be and seem to live with this grace, this ease, this peace in their hearts and joy in their smiles. They tell us about what's possible. It's really annoying, isn't it? I mean, who are they to tell us how good it can be? Easy for them to say, they don't know me, my life, my responsibilities. And that begins our inner voice, our dialogue of defense, our judgment and our criticism begins to kick in because here's the thing. What we don't want to see is what those people have likely gone through to know what they know and experience what they're experiencing now. Because if we knew, if we find out that their road wasn't at all paved in gold, that they had the same or even tougher struggles than us, then their stories and their journey start to talk louder than our excuses. Our eyes are open to the fact that it may just be possible to create that life of peace, of joy, of ease, of grace. It's a life that's beyond limits. And once we've seen it, it's nearly impossible to put the blinders back on. Well, guess what? We have one of those extraordinary people in those bright lights today. So if you prefer to live with those limits, bound by stress and judgment, if you prefer things to stay status quo, you may want to turn this one off. But if you want a peek or even a great look at what may be possible, if you want to be inspired or let the seed of hope be planted, that touch of fire of possibility, then buckle in. Today, our guest is Shanoa Maxwell. She's an entrepreneur, a world-renowned photographer, actress, and a recognized authority in emotional and soul intelligence. She has served as a trusted advisor and coach to some of the world's top entertainers and most influential millennials. She created Live Limitlessly, which is a platform for self-mastery and lasting transformation. It's a place where individuality is wealth and simple shifts of perspective ignite possibility, personal power, and joy. And with that, Shanoa, thank you so much for joining us here on One Idea Away. 
Oh, it's such a uh, wonderful uh, day today, and I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for that extraordinary introduction. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know, I guess, you know, one of the places I do like to begin is just right up front asking kind of what's at the heart, what's the core of the message and the work that you're doing in the world today that you want people to hear? Love. Um, that is the foundation of everything healing, good, and wonderful. And that is the foundation of my practice, my brand, my company, Live Limitlessly. I believe that love, um, when mastered from the inside out, um, creates a confident, happy, loving being. And we can, it connects us, it attracts, it transcends everything. So when you radiate love out into the world and onto others, the more love you'll experience back. And mm -hmm. you literally become a love magnet. Mm -hmm. And that's not just in, in, in personal love, that's in love of mm -hmm. career, purpose, drive, body, um, self, uh, community, everything. So actually, let me, let me I, cause I wanna get into a little bit of this background of what leads you to where you are today. But before I do, the way in which you describe love, and I would like to actually further expand on what you were just saying, because you're not only talking about that experience that we may have with another human being, you're talking mm -hmm. about something much grander than that. And I was hoping you could you could speak a little bit more to how you really truly see experience and quote unquote define what that love is. Well, I believe everything in life um, is created through energy. And energy, I think love, it's not just what I think. You can look it up. It's, it's really researched all over the world. But love is the greatest frequency of the world. It is an energy. It is a force. It is something that um, you can give off and give out, and it will literally change the vibration of your being, the vibration of the world. Um, and so when I talk of love, I talk of a, a love energy, um, I talk of a love frequency, something that you can plug into and get connected with that literally creates ripples all around you. So it's bigger than just the one-on-one -on -one personal connection, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's everything we are and everything that is, is how this universe is created. Mm. You know, so much of, of what I love sharing with people is that idea of when you truly do clear away the things that, that have uh, fallen on top of us through the years of, of mm. biases and expectations and judgments and beliefs and all these types of things. It clears that mechanism. It clears that ability to connect to this much deeper place within ourselves and even within this life, I will say, and what comes through at those times and what you're able to express at those times and the wonderful synchronicities that begin to occur for you in life are just really, truly extraordinary. Yeah. And so I'm curious for you, I mean, naturally to be able to speak of, of this in the way that you do, it's, it's obvious that you must've been born just like the Dalai Lama and blessed <laughs> and immediately, right? Everything was just perfect right from the get-go, right? Absolutely. Instead, <laughs> I happen to know that you had a slightly different path, a slightly different uh, background story, I guess you could say. And I was wondering if you could, you could share a bit of really truly what your journey actually looked like, because I, this to me is part of, you know, even as I alluded to in the intro, I think so important for people to be able to hear and to understand that, that when we have individuals who are as wonderful as you are and sharing the types of things that you do, you're not sharing them just because it was like a blessed magic trick that just anointed you with this someday. It was something that you really truly had to go through a very different experience to understand what this actually is. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, you, you mentioned something in the intro, a road paved in gold. And I think so many people look at me from afar and watch me, my joy, um, my light, my ability to kind of flow through life and, and seamlessly move into spaces um, that they feel are so challenging because they feel like my road was paved in gold. But actually, it wasn't. It was quite the opposite. Um, I was raised um, in New York City, and at a very early age, my parents got divorced. And from that moment on, I think I was about six years old, um, I was moved in and out of really um, uh, abusive situations, adults who um, really took advantage of me being a child. Um, there was a lot of neglect there was um, a lot of uh, challenging issues and adult situations that no child really should be in. Um, 
I could get into what that looked like. I mean, everybody kind of understands abuse, you know, um, there's verbal abuse and there's physical abuse and, and both of those I suffered through. Um, so much so that I felt like my life was not worth living. Um, so by the time I had become a teenager and I was in my sophomore year, I was so ridden with darkness. I mean, I would just wake up and from the very moment that I realized that I was still alive, I would just start crying. Like, I mean, uncontrollably, like, why am I here? Like, how, how come I'm a child and, and I'm already moved 18 times and I've already been put up for foster care and nobody seems like they love me and nobody is standing for me? Everybody is hurting me and abusing me. Why would the universe put me here? It was just too much to understand. Um, so I tried to kill myself. And I didn't do it as a call for help. I did it because I literally couldn't take anymore and I really wanted to end my life. It was just too painful. Um, but you know, through hardships and through hard lessons, sometimes that's where the gold comes. Mm -hmm. And that was where I got my, my, I guess my rebirth in that moment. Um, I was put into, um, a psychiatric ward for adolescents. I became a ward of the state. I was in, at the time living in Berkeley, California. And the basically the government takes you and they do all kinds of testing to make sure that A, you're not going to harm yourself anymore. B, are you really mentally ill or are there challenges that you need to be treated for um, that are psychological? And or C, is it just your environment? And if so, then we need to remove you from your environment and put you into another situation. I was tested and I, I went through all of the process. I was in the hospital probably for almost two months, maybe a little shorter. And what they found was that fortunately I had a really high IQ. Um, nothing was wrong with me mentally. It was just literally my environment was so bad. So they said, okay, we're going to put her up for foster care. But what they did was they paired me with this incredible doctor. She was a, psychi a psychiatrist and um, worked with teenagers and adolescents. Her name was Dr. Eleanor Luce. Mm -hmm. um, and she took a liking to me and literally said, you know what, Shnoa, there is nothing wrong with you. And this is the first time that I had ever heard this that there's nothing wrong with me and that I don't have to be the circumstances of my environment and that I could change my life right now today if I want to. And for some reason, those words resonated with me. I believed her and I said, okay, show me how. And we went on this journey together and she started teaching me how to change my mindset Mm -hmm. how to change how I view the world, how I take in information, how maybe I can see a little broader and wider, and, and how I can start to, if I have anxiety, use some breathing techniques, techniques and, and use some presence, uh, they, they were called presence exercises, where you mm -hmm. literally look and find the beauty in every day. What can we find right now, today, that is so beautiful, that takes your mind off of the negative? And she helped me understand that thoughts create things. So whatever I was focused on would be the outcome of my life. So it's at this moment right now that we have to change that focus and move our mind to what we want it to be, not what it was, not what we're hurt by, but what we're driven to go on the journey to. What is our future? And that changed me. Yeah. And wow. I, and, 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 and I started to lean into those practices and really just, I became addicted to it. I, I, it because when you, when you do it and you believe it, the transformation that occurs happens so rapidly. It's not some of those things like in therapy, sometimes you go in and you, you're, you're there on the couch for, for years <laughs> and you're just trying to understand like, how come things are not changing? I feel a little better, but things are not changing. But when you really lean in, to the power of your own mindset and what happens in your mind's eye and that you are the creator for your life and you take mm. responsibility for that journey. Oh my God, tremendous things happen and your mm. life opens up instantly. Yeah. And so I did that at, at 15 and then I did it at 16 and I did it at 17 and I just leaned in and mastered it and studied it. And I just became somebody who really understood that life doesn't have limits. I create my limits. 
And I just started mm. attacking that. And every dream that I ever wanted, everything that I ever set my mind to do, I've accomplished. And I've accomplished well. And I've accomplished with great joy. And I'm very proud of that. And that's what I really try to become a mirror for for people and be an example for and, and say, you know what, I literally changed my life. I should have been, a, I always say I could have been a, a crackhead and I hate to say that, I'm not judging them, but I could have literally been on the streets yeah. with no home, with nowhere to go, but now here I am and I'm happy. And I think happiness, joy, peace, and living a life that you love is the greatest measure of success. How much do you think you would benefit from clearing your mind of just some that mental chatter and clutter that goes on all day long? How much do you think you would benefit to just kind of de-stress, detox your heart just a little bit so that you could feel a little bit more freely and openly once again? Well, this is at the heart of an experience that we just ran for the One Idea Away community very recently. And we received this wonderful feedback of how amazing and opening and freeing this whole process was. And now we're ready to roll it out to everyone and to roll it out for free. Meaning this is something that is completely free for you to participate on because we feel really strongly about you doing this, about you connecting to this. You see, it's called the 10 Days to Connection Challenge. It's an experience that's designed to help you clear your mind of all of that mental clutter that keeps you from truly connecting to a happier life. It also creates the space that you deserve to simply take that breath to uncover what really makes you happy and let go of things that just simply aren't working. You detox your mind, you detox your heart while connecting more to the life that you wish to experience and learn more about how to bring it out in you. It's just five to 10 minutes a day for a week and a half. It's one of the most beneficial things that you can do for yourself. You'll create the space you need to connect more deeply to life. All you gotta do is go over to oneideaaway.com forward slash connect. That's oneideaaway.com forward slash connect to jump into one of the next 10 days to connection challenges. Do me a favor, please jump in as soon as you can. Take full advantage of this and join the, the community that goes along with it because we kind of cheer each other on and champion each other on as we go through this whole process. So you're going to enjoy this. Sign up today. I look forward to, well, connecting with you there. I want to connect a few things here. Um, one, because I also know that we're going to come back to some of this this as well, is it's interesting always to me to hear how often when individuals have have gone through such struggle and and such extraordinary circumstances that there seems to be at the this this point in time this uh, this mentor, it's the sage, it's the right. It's, it's just this trusted person who's, who's got this charisma about them that helps us begin to see something that, that we, we have not yet seen ourselves or, or understand something we have not yet understood. And, uh, I had a fascinating interview with a Dr. Brooks who, or Dr. Robert Brooks, who, who talks so much about this. And it, it seems to be prevalent in, in, in so many people who've had these extraordinary transformations occur within their life. Mm. Um, and I want to come back. We're gonna, I know we're going to end up coming back to that, but uh, I just kind of want to plant the seed for it because it's such a, an important part of the journey. Uh, I think the 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 other thing, and I, I guess maybe to, to use this as where things begin to go from here, right? So, I mean, to receive the type of information that you're describing and the, the type of knowledge and the, uh, the profound nature of some of that when you're 15, uh, yeah. having already gone through what you're going through, right? I mean, that's a, that's a whole lot to, to, to digest as a 15 year old. Uh, yeah. I know at 15, I was not in the position that, that I would have heard any of that. Um, and you, you then set out, you know, kind of, 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 I think at this point you were living on your own. Mm -hmm. And, and so what, what kind of what unfolds, you know, how, how do you go then from, from kind of where you were living on your own to then becoming an actress, becoming a photographer, becoming a coach, uh, and this incredible trajectory that you've been on ever since. What, what, what did some of that evolution start to look like? Well, you know, it's interesting when you're suffering as a child, you end up becoming um, in survival mode. You don't really yeah. end up living your life and, and, and understanding who you are or what you can be. You don't know yourself. <laughs> so um, for many of my years after I got out of the hospital, I was in survival mode, even though I was... Yeah going down the road of learning this information and, and practicing um, all of these techniques, I was still very much a student and, and well, we're always students, but I was still very much in a, in a, um, 
foundational stage of this learning process. Mm -hmm. Um, So I had a lot of setbacks and I was still just trying to figure out how to make these things work. Um, because once I got out the hospital, I went back one other time and then I was on my own from the time I graduated high school on. I've never lived anywhere else. So I think part of it was trying to figure out who I am. And I knew that I didn't fit into a corporate world at that moment because for me, I, I, I couldn't really put my mind on school. There was nobody supporting me. I hadn't had an opportunity to focus on my college grades and and college classes. So I'm like, I I don't think that's going to be a fit for me. What is going to be a fit for me? And I went down just different roads of discovery. Okay, well, I'll try to work here. That doesn't work. I'm going to be this. Oh, that doesn't work. And and one day it was interesting. I was was living in New York City uh, by this time. I was about 20, I'd say four years old. And I was still crying, believe it or not. I mean, just because you're going through this process and you're learning so much doesn't mean that hard times don't still happen. Um, But I'm sitting in the middle of the street. I must have looked like a crazy woman because I'm talking to myself. and, And I talk to the universe every single moment every single time I can. And I call it the universe. Some people call it God. Some people call it the creator. Some people call it Jehovah. I just say that there's a a bigger, a bigger source. So I'm talking to the source and I'm like, you know, what am I here to do? And I'm crying and I'm crying and I'm crying. I'm just literally walking down the street. It starts to rain. And I'm like, Oh my God. And I need to use the bathroom. And at this time in New York city in the nineties, you couldn't just go into a Uh, an establishment and say, Hey, can I use your restroom? They were like for paying customers only. So I got rejected from about three different places. And finally I found this building and I ran inside the building and I was like, I'm peeking my head in trying to find a restroom. And I see this woman and she sees me and she's like, come in, come into the building. I'm like, okay. I come into her room and I, and, and she goes, sit down. And I said, Oh no, no, I'm so sorry. I just need to use the restroom. She goes, Oh, it's in the back. I go in the back use the restroom, come back out. And she goes, now have a seat. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not here for anything. She goes, no, no, no. Yes, you are. Have a seat. It was an acting class. (laughs) (laughs) And I had no idea. I was like an acting class. Okay. This is so odd. And I just started hearing people moaning and going through all these strange exercises and doing all of these strange things. And she's like, try it. And so I did out of respect for her giving me an opportunity to use the bathroom. And I tell you that there was an opening inside of me that I had never felt before. Mm. Um, I, I, I found myself. That was the first time that I was, I had that aha moment that something had shifted inside me and not to sound graphic, but it felt like an orgasm of the best kind. Like I just literally opened up and everything released inside of me. And I said, this is what I need to do. This is what I'm going to be. And so as soon as I felt that I went for it. I'm a firm believer that you know all your answers. There's a cosmic intelligence that's already been given to us. We're born with it. Our cells know. And all we have to do is listen. And that's the hardest part, right? But when you are practiced at listening, you really get to hear some tremendous lessons. Mm -hmm. You get to hear how you're supposed to be led. And so I listened, I believed, and I went for it. And every time I hear something that strongly, I listen, even if it takes me off of a a pathway that I feel like I was already directed on, Mm -hmm. which is how I ended up going from acting to photography. Because sometimes that season and that lesson is done. And it doesn't have to be done forever, but it's definitely done for that moment. And so you hear that, but so many people resist that out of fear. And so they get stuck and then they get hurt and then they stay in pain and then they're upset and they don't know why because they're not listening. So I just keep listening and it keeps leading me and it keeps leading me to my joy and it keeps leading me to my purpose and it keeps leading me so that I am in flow with life, not working against life. Mm. So for, for, you know, kind of everybody listening, few things, um, for those of you that just heard that and said, I'll have what she's having, the key <laughs> there was listening, right? Mm-hmm. So the, I think this is one of the, the things, and I think you're really, you know, just so spot on with this. It's one of the most difficult things for us to do. And yeah. part of it 
is because we don't know, we, we may not know how mm -hmm. is one. Number two is we're scared to hell of what we're going to hear, which is probably the bigger one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so I'm curious what, what is some of that process? Meaning how does somebody begin to really start to listen? Then we'll talk about what do you do with what you hear? Because that's a whole other part of this conversation. But how does one really truly begin to practice that idea of, of listening and listening to self and listening within and listening to the synchronicities that are just literally can fall in our laps? That's a great question. I think, you know, to your point, listening becomes really challenging because there are most of the times, some time, well, most of the times you hear things that you don't want to hear. <laughs> yeah. So tuning in your tuning fork and trusting what you hear is a big deal. It's a big deal. But let me go back to that. So listening, you have to drown out the noise. You have to be okay with being by yourself. You have to understand that there's a lot of information in silence. And if you take the time to become silent and to just still yourself, you get connected to something so much greater than what you can even know. You get, you get connected to, I said it before, cosmic intelligence. You get connected to your truth. You get connected to real love energy. You get connected to yourself. Hmm. What you describe, and, and again, for everybody, is you go through this. When you start to step into that place of silence and stillness, when you first begin this, you're going to start to hear the, the very active mind, the, hmm. the narration and the, the critical side of us and the judgments and all these things. And the hard part for so many of us is staying silent and staying still then mm -hmm. because it does quiet. It mm -hmm. does, you know, when all of a sudden it realizes it can't get a reaction out of you, <laughs> all of a sudden it's like, ah, all right, well, I'm going to take a break. Yeah, right? absolutely. And that's when this, this amazing insight and intuition comes through and even stay with that because it just keeps bringing you deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, this is not a one-time sit on the cushion for 20 minutes and you're there. No, no it's not. It's, it's a lifetime journey. <laughs> exactly. And so this, this is an evolution. That's right. And I think that kind of brings me then to this, this second part of that evolution, which is when we do start to hear those things, and sometimes they are very uncomfortable, we may not want to hear them, but we hear them. And we can start to distinguish the fact that, okay, this is not just... This isn't just part of the story. It's not just part of fear. It's not just part of, I wish, the, you know, the grass is greener stuff. That's right. It starts to, you can feel it. Like you said, you felt it. It was, mm -hmm. it was in you. It was completely there and you, you knew it. It was going on. Something That's was right. here. That's when right. you start to connect there, even if it's really, really scary, how did you begin to, to embrace that and, and get used to hearing and then making those transitions because I, that, I think you said it before, it's something that terrifies people. We know this part of our life, and that means it's safe, it's familiar, it, it, we know what we're getting over here, and we're worried about trading that in for something that we don't know. And mm -hmm. yet you've done it, and you've done it several times, and you've done it several times while at very you know, promising and, and even peak levels of, of what you were doing at those moments, yeah. and yet you still shifted. How'd you do it? You know, it's, that's an interesting question and, and one that I've never been asked before, so thank you. Hmm. Um, there is, I'm going to take the long road sure. to that, that sure. um, answer because I think it's really important for people to understand that there's such power in pain. Hmm. And for me... Because my childhood was so fraught with pain at the beginning. I mean, that's basically the whole first chapter. <laughs> pain, hurt, um, disappointment, um, abandonment, all of those things that we're so afraid of. Um, I got comfortable in feeling and going through that pain. So what happens when you're okay with Seeing a fire and jumping through it and knowing that on the other side, you're unscathed, you can do it more frequently. 
So rather than saying, hey, I'm fearful and letting it create walls for you that are too high to climb or jump over, leap over them. Hmm. Go through them. Each time you practice going through your pain, pushing past your fear, putting it on your back and taking it with you, you will be more available to listen to your truth and move forward in that, no Mm. matter what it is. Mm. That brings up several things. Um, Let's see where this takes us. I think one is that what I also hear in there is part of what it's sort of prepared you for in a way, but it's this recognition, because I think this is something that's really misunderstood in, in so many different ways, is that our pain and our fear, I won't phrase it as that it can be a gift because, you know, I've heard the phrase, you know, you never want to give it to somebody else, yeah. <laughs> um, right? And, and instead, it's that it can be a light. It can bring our attention to things that, that are either within us or that we can pay attention to or that illuminates something for us. And it, we're probably not going to see it at that moment, um, and nor should you even need to at that moment. It's usually going to come afterwards. Um, but it, it starts to potentially open us up to something. But something we also alluded to prior to this conversation, you brought up before, even in your own story, we were talking about it before we, we started recording, is also the importance of having that, that, that guide or that advisor, that coach, that's part of this journey as well. Because when we are going through it, and that's really, I think, one of the the maybe beneficial things of mm-hmm. what's taking place in society now is that, you know, originally maybe it was therapy, now certainly coaching and positive psychology and uh, mindfulness and all of these other movements. People are now beginning to seek, how do I start to move through this in a different way and of a, a, with a different level of awareness and, and face it more than they ever have before? Mm-hmm. And yet at the same time, there's such a critical nature of that relationship with somebody who you can truly just be there with and you know is going to accept you and move you forward. And so I'm just wondering if you, you could talk from your own perspective of how vital, not just the, the, the therapist who, or psycho, um, sorry, psychologist who helped you at the time was, but even since then of, of the roles that, that mentors and advisors have played, because it's very much the role that you play now. Yeah. How vital has that been? Oh my God. It's, it's life changing. You know, everybody at some point needs someone to keep them accountable, to show them a different point of view to help them see another side of things. We all need coaches. We all need mentors. We all need somebody that we can trust with all of ourselves so that we can hear beyond our own voice, beyond our own fear, so that we can have our blind spots revealed. We're all living blindly sometimes. You know, even me, you know, there are things that I do that I'm not present to that I would love for someone to say, hey, let me just hold this mirror up to you so that you can get better. We're all in a journey every single day of our lives. That's that's our purpose. How can we be our best self every single moment, every single. Every single moment for every single person and for ourselves, Mm -hmm. because that's the journey right now. The thing is, is that. You know, I always tell my, I wanted to go back to something you said, because I think it's very important. Something that I always remind my clients of is that there is a pathway that carves out inside of you when you have pain. It's like a Mm -hmm. tunnel. It's constantly digging deep, right? Everybody knows that when they're, they have anxiety, it comes from like a higher place in their chest and their stomach. Mm -hmm. But when they have real heartbreak, oh, it's at the gut of their, it's at the pit of their stomach, right? There, when, when you have that kind of pain, it, it carves something that's deep inside of you. But on the other side of pain, there is something that is so magnificent, And the thing that is important about a coach and a mentor or a therapist is that if they're a good one, they can help you understand how to release all of that darkness and refill that beautiful tunnel, that carving that got created full of light, full of good stuff, full of Mm. positivity, full of power. Mm. So if you have that depth of pain, oh my God, on the other side, you have that depth of power. And that is why coaching and therapy go hand in hand. And I say go hand in hand because therapists do a whole different job. Yeah. Right. Therapists, you want to go to a therapist, you know, some people need it. They have mental 
challenges, mental illnesses, bipolar issues, things that really need psych- psychiatric chair, uh, care. But if you're somebody out there who just needs to reframe your thoughts, change your habits, get back on track with your success, move out of a space that you feel really fearful from, if you're somebody that doesn't understand your worth, your value, or your purpose, you need a good coach. Mm. They will help you quicker than anyone, quicker than a best friend. And I'm sorry to say this, quicker than a pastor. Mm -hmm. Because they make you accountable. They hold you responsible. And they help you take control back from your life. And that is beautiful. The way you described this idea of how our pain and our fear and our struggles can carve this this part of us, part carved down into us and deep, and to fill that depth with power and yes. and and what that brings speaks uh, number one beautiful way of describing that uh, because I've seen it and mm. and experienced the these you know what so much of what you're describing and. It's something that I, it, you know, just to, to, I know we've got to start to bring this full circle in a moment, but one of those big things that's out there right now and why people feel disconnected is because you brought up the idea of purpose. And mm. I just wanted to ask you about this because I see that when there is some of that hole that's been dug, people are searching for this purpose that will somehow fill it back up yeah. as if there was this purpose that was ordained just for them to go find somewhere. Mm-hmm. And what I've found, and this is what I'm curious is so you may not see it the same way, but what I have found is that when we start to recognize how is it that we uniquely create purpose as opposed to going to try and find it somewhere. Mm-hmm. We have a very, very different response because it also recognizes who we are individually and it is that filling up process once again because we recognize that it's it's being generated and cultivated within ourselves to then exactly. bring out into the world. And I'm just curious from, from your perspective, from your work, as well as your own personal experiences, just kind of what that brings up for you or what, what thoughts or even differences you may have uh, in that. Um, I love how you put that and I, 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 I agree with you. I think that a lot of people get into a lot of pain and a lot of confusion because they're looking for this big outside <laughs> entity that this aha moment, this, what is it? This thing that says, what is my purpose? You know, and it really frustrates them and bothers them and makes them feel inadequate yes. or like they're not on the right road. If I can say anything that you will take, that is like a gem today. Everybody understand that your life is your purpose. Mm. You being alive And when I say alive, I don't mean just being like, hey, I woke up in the morning. I'm talking about your enthusiasm for taking each breath, for understanding that because I'm here, because I was created, there is a purpose just by my presence alone that I'm feeling in this earth, in this, in this, in, in this, in this space. I might be an inspiration by what I wear, by how I smile, by my mannerisms, by the way that I create, by the way that I speak, by the way that I support others. It doesn't have to look a certain way. Purpose is is being filled up with the joy that I am alive and I'm here to breathe and bring my best self into this space every moment. And I'm going to set an intention every single morning to light up the sky with my being. When you can do that, you are living on purpose. You know, I want to thank you for being on One Idea Away. There's nothing more that I could possibly add to that. That was absolutely (laughs) fantastic. This is Uh, wonderful. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Thank you so much. Uh, Again, everybody, this was Shanoa Maxwell. Uh, Check out Live Limitlessly. Uh, Go back and listen to this conversation because there's there's a whole lot of gems that are captured within this uh, this whole chat. Part of it in story and part of it a little bit more or overtly. But please take a look through this. This idea that your life is your purpose. It's the the unique experience that you get to bring. It's the unique perspective and the unique talents and the unique passion. It's your life. Bring more of you to it. And the yes. more that you do that, the more you will rise into the relationships and the connection and the purpose and the passion and the energy and the experience of life that you wish to have. And that is what we wish for you. Yes. 
<laughs> There's Limitlessly, and please look me up. I'm on Instagram uh, under Shanoa Maxwell or at livelimitlessly.com. Outstanding. And for everybody, as always, I want to thank you once again for dropping in on One Idea Away. And until next time, continue to enjoy the journey. Hey, as this episode is wrapping up, you may be asking yourself, what's next? Well, what's next? I hope that you've been joining in on the monthly live cast that we do for the One Idea Away community. You see, every single month, we gather some incredible guests that are talking about the types of transitions that they've made or are even in the midst of making to create a happier life, to create a life that's more aligned to who they truly are. So we're talking about happiness and purpose. We're talking about community. We're talking about how do we have that modern day success, meaning how do we succeed in our happiness, our well-being, our quality of life, while also making a great living, making the difference in the contributions that we are each meant to make. So when you get involved in the monthly live cast, you can ask some questions of our guests. You can participate with some of the other community members and the ongoing chat that just seems to explode as we get into these deeper conversations throughout the whole hour that we do this. So the only way though that you can get these special episodes is when you register for them. It is free, but you got to register to get involved and continue the conversation as we're always talking about. So just hop on over to oneideaaway.com forward slash live cast and oneideaaway.com forward slash live cast. Join us there, get involved in the conversation, get involved in the community. I can't wait to continue the conversation with you. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you really enjoyed it, do me a favor, let us know. You can keep the conversation going and send us a message on our Facebook page, which is simply One Idea Away. Go ahead and tag me in the post or even just direct messages. Also, I would be incredibly grateful if you could share this episode along with someone that you believe could benefit from hearing the ideas and the messages that we got into. That's pretty much why we do this. So you can just go ahead and share it from your app or email it along, whatever works for you. The point is, is to share, to talk, to discuss, and keep the dialogue going because it's in those conversations that ideas can take hold and create profound shifts in perspective. That's what allows us to live life more fully, deeply, and consciously. As always, we would love to see you post a review for the podcast and iTunes or whichever app you're using. And until next time, remember... You're never more than one idea away from a whole new reality. This is Luke Iorio and One Idea Away, signing off. <laughs>